Hi everyone, welcome to part 3 of our video lectures on section 9.1 and 9.3 dealing with differential equations and their applications. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at one more application problem dealing with population growth. Now, population growth, as we've seen in the previous examples, is often modeled in the short term with an exponential function. However, this is not really too feasible because, well, as we see in real life, a population does not keep on growing exponentially. This is where the logistic growth comes into play. Logistic growth is a model that is used to describe how the population of a particular species grows over time when its resources are limited. Now, unlike exponential growth, which assumes unlimited resource, logistic growth takes into account a carrying capacity, which is the maximum number of individuals that a given environment can support over the long term. So logistic growth assumes that initially a population will grow exponentially, but as the population is growing and as it's approaching its carrying capacity, then the growth rate will begin to slow down because, well, there is not enough food or resources or maybe competition comes into play. But yeah, the growth rate will slow down and it will eventually stabilize. Mathematically, logistic growth is modeled with the following differential equation. dpdt, which is the rate of change for the population, is proportional to the product of the population, put here, times the difference between the population, I'll put here the difference between the population and its carrying capacity. Now the carrying capacity, I'm gonna be using the letter M to represent it. Now, I wrote down here another form of the logistic growth equation. This is the one that sometimes other books use, but I'm gonna be skipping, skip, <laughs> I'm gonna be sticking with this one. Now, another thing that I would like to point out here is that the initial value of the population is not something as simple as P0. Instead, it will be related to the carrying capacity M and some value of C that we're going to find out later. But yeah, our P0 here is also a little bit different. Now, given this differential equation, if you're trying to solve this one, it's actually going to be a little more complicated than the ones that we've been encountering because, well, this one here will be requiring us to use partial fraction decomposition. Now, I'm going to go ahead and skip the derivation and just give you the formula that is the solution for this differential equation. The solution is the function given by m, the carrying capacity, divided by 1 plus some constant c times e raised to the negative m times kt. So for this problem, guys, um, I will be providing the solution for you, well, the function solution for you, and I'm not going to ask you to find the integral for that differential equation. It's a little bit trickier. It, it, you need to use partial fraction decomposition. Okay, so with this in mind, let's go ahead and take a look at a problem where logistic growth is taken into account. So example seven tells the following. Ecologists estimate that an artificial lake can support a maximum of 2,500 fish. So this one is telling us right now that, okay, well, it looks like our carrying capacity is 2,500. Now we're being told that the lake initially stocked with 500 fish, all right, so we know the starting population, and after six months, its population is estimated to be 1,500 after six months. Okay, now we wanna go ahead and see if we can find a formula for the number of fish in the lake after t months and estimate the fish population at the end of the first year. Okay, now, before I begin this problem though, I do wanna give you a better visual representation of how the logistic equation looks like. So let's go ahead and take a look at Desmos. All right, so here's the logistic growth function with a couple of values for m, c, and k. Now, what I want you to note is that on the left-hand side, the graph starts off like a normal exponential function. You see here that, okay, you can picture the population increasing, but then there will be an inflection point somewhere around here where the rate of increase will now decrease. In other words, the second derivative is going to switch from positive to a negative. And you'll see here that the graph is still increasing, but it's increasing at a slower pace or a slower rate. And then it starts to approximate the carrying capacity, which in this case was 25. Now I can go ahead and pick different values for C and it's going to change the steepness of the graph. But overall though, it's still the same shape. At some point your graph is increasing and it's going to keep on increasing. However, it's not gonna be increasing as fast. And again, if you think about it in the context of a real world scenario, 
you can picture, let's say that this graph is modeling the population of rabbits and the population, it's increasing, but then it gets to a point where, I don't know, maybe there's too much rabbit, too many rabbits, there's not enough food, so the population itself starts to decrease or the mortality rate starts to go up. Or I don't know, maybe there's there's more rabbits there than, I don't know, there's wolves. So now there's more wolves, eat, well, not there's more wolves, but the excess of rabbits are being eaten by the wolves. Some situations like that that happen. That's why logistic growth is a much better model that we can use for populations. Okay, so now let's go back to our... All right, so since this one here was giving us the carrying capacity, and we know that we're dealing with logistic growth, I'm just going to go ahead and write down the solution here. We know that the population is going to be modeled by the function p of t is equals to m divided by 1 plus c times e to the negative mkt. Alrighty, now I'm going to go ahead and put in the 50, well, uh, yeah, I'll put in the 2500 now. Okay, so it seems like there's a couple of values that we need to know. We need to figure out, okay, what's a k value and what is our c value. So let's make use of the information that the problem gives us. Now we know that p naught is given here by the function or by the formula m divided by 1 plus c. So I'm going to go ahead and use this information because the problem tells us that originally or initially the lake is stocked with 500, fi uh, 500 fish. So I put here if t is equal to 0, then p of 0 is equal to 500. All right, so then this is going to give us, or this is going to be the same thing as the carrying capacity divided by 1 plus c. So divided by 1 plus c, so I'm going to go ahead and use that to figure out our c value. So then this is going to give us 1 plus c is equals to 2500 divided by 500, which is equals to 5. So we know then that 1 plus c is equals to 5, so that means that c is equals to 4. Okay, so we know now the c, and the only thing that we're missing now is the k value. So for the k value, what can we do? Well, before I do that though, I'm going to go ahead and plug in everything that I know. As it stands right now, our population function is 2500 divided by 1 plus 4 times e to the negative 2500 times kt. Alrighty, now this problem also is telling us that after six months, then the fish population was 1,500. So I'm going to go ahead and figure out, okay, well, with that information, that t of 6, the population is 1,500. Using that, we can figure out our k value. So we're going to get, then, 1,500 is equals to 2,500 divided by 1 plus 4 times e to the negative 2,500 times k times t. Now, at this point, well, we do want to figure out the k value. And, well, it seems like it's in a lot of numbers that we need to take into consideration. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to abbreviate this one here as a b. And I have neglected to put in the t value. t value was 6. So I'm going to leave the b be equals to a negative 2500 k. So then with that abbreviation here, we're going to get, let's see, a 1500 is equals to 2500 all over 1 plus 4 times e to the b times 6. Okay, so rewriting this one, I'm going to have 1 plus 4 times e to the 6b equals to 2500 divided by 1500, which is going to be equals to, I'm going to go ahead and keep fractions, it's going to be equals to 25 over 5, that should be 5 thirds. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and subtract 1, subtract 1, which is going to give me 2 thirds. So then we're going to have 4 e to the 6 b is equals to 2 thirds, divide by 4, divide by 4. So it's going to give us 1 sixth. So we know that e to the 6 b is equals to 1 sixth. Now I'm going to go ahead and take the ln of both sides. And as you see here, guys, I'm skipping up a couple of steps. That's OK. So taking the ln of both sides, I'm going to get a 6b is equals to the ln of 
one sixth, which is approximately a negative 1.79. And last and final step that I'll do here, I'll divide by six, I'll divide by six, which I got approximately a 0.3. All right, so this is the B value. Now, technically this is equals to the 2,500 times K, but at this point, the K value is not really our growth rate. It's just some constant of proportionality, so I'm not gonna use it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and write down our formula here as 2,500 divided by one plus four times e to the, well, I guess I will keep the negative outside, get a little bit better. So I should have kept the negative here. So I'll put the negative here, the negative here. So it's a negative 0.3 t. All right, so this is the equation that is modeling the population for this problem. Okay, now we got the equation. So now we need to figure out, okay, well, with this equation, what would be the fish population at the end of the first year? So all that we would need to do, to do for part, or to figure out the population after one year, after one year, the T value is 12. So evaluating our function at 12, is gonna be equals to, yeah, 2,500 divided by one plus four times e to the negative 0.3 times 12, and I got approximately 2,254 fish. And that's it. All right, so let me make this a little bit smaller. But yeah, so for this problem here, guys, again, there was not a lot of calculus to be done here. I just wanted you guys to see here that, okay, well, certain differential equations can be used to model populations, can be used to model cooling, but those are only very few applications. Because again, remember, calculus is a mathematics of change. So if you're dealing with a situation that it's involving change, well, then you can use calculus and differential equations to solve it. All right, so this is gonna be it for part three. As you saw in this problem, there was really not a lot of calculus that we did. Because again, I just used the formula. You guys don't have to worry about deriving it. However, the last thing that I wanna mention for this one is that uh, the substitution that we used here with the B, um, this one was just to make our lives a little bit easier. We could have used, we could have still figured out the K value. It's just that once we got the value here, the, po the negative 0.3, well, we would have needed to divide this one by 2,500. And then once we plugged it back into the formula, we would have still needed to multiply by the 2500. So I just took a shortcut here because all I wanted to, all I wanted to find out was the coefficient in front of the T here, or basically what is the power that I'm raising this exponential function to? Alrighty guys, so this is it for chapter nine. This is the last topic that we're gonna be covering. Next topics are gonna be involving sequences and series, but we're gonna be talking a lot more about those ones later. All right, so. This is it. Have a good one.